Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews. My name is James, and here I like to explore the world of fountain pens, ink, and paper. And today, it's a pen day. This is the new Hongdian A9. And uh, quite an interesting looking pen. It's not the first from Hongdian to have this basic shape and finish, but it's the first I've gotten. And uh, I'm kind of liking this. But that's not the most important part about this pen. This is a nice big cartridge converter pen with... A great big nib. Yes, that is a number eight size nib from Hong Dian, and I want to put this nib to the test. So grab a cup of coffee and some ink and let's get started. And here it is, the Hong Dian A9. This is a cartridge converter pen, very similar in appearance, but not identical to the Hong Dian in what was that? The 10, the N10. I think it's the only N series pen that I don't have from Hong Dian. For whatever reason, that one just never really grabbed me and when I saw this version as a cartridge converter and simpler trim and just a little bit different look I thought you know what now I think this might be something that I'm interested in so here we are the A9 it has this gunmetal gray metal trim and we'll start up at the top where we find the Hong Dian Dove of Peace logo and it says Hong Dian A9 and then a wreath sort of design around that you come down the edge and you have repeated Hong Dian on this side and A9 on the reverse Hong Dian being just above the clip and centered there and very much an arrowhead clip nice and strong metal clip functional works just fine the trim ring that you see there is really thin and I'm guessing that's why they decided to put the make and model up on the side of the finial instead and I like this. I like this much better than that complicated trim ring that's on the N10. And this just looks cleaner and better to my eye. With this metal finish that they have going on here, I feel like the less busy look works a little bit better than it did in the other pen. And I'm glad they've given us a couple of different options here. This one just appeals a bit more to me. And then you come down to the end and then you just have the colored finish that reminds me of those aluminum cups that we would drink our ice water and tea in when temperatures soared into the triple digits of a Texas July, just like normally happens around here. But actually, we're a little bit cooler today. So back to my nice hot drink there. Overall, I think the exterior of the pen looks good. Now, I will say it has this unfinished line on both sides. And I don't know if that was necessary because of the finish. I don't really see why that would be the case, but maybe it was. I have no idea. I know that I don't really care for those lines, but that will uh, depend on your own preferences and things that do or do not bother you. I do like that you can get them sort of lined up, but only, only on one side. If you get one side lined up, the other side is most likely going to be a little off. But this is, this is pretty close. If you if you don't look too close or stare at it too long, you will have to figure out where on your pin to uh, align the cap so that when you've closed it, it will line up. And for mine, I just, I watch those lines and twist and there you're done. See, wasn't that nice and easy? And did you notice what that also indicated? This is about a one turn decapper. And how do you like that? Very handy. I like that. It does have a plastic liner and plastic threads meeting other plastic threads for the cap. You can post it and it posts securely enough. When you do, it is not too back heavy, but you definitely do feel that cap because as you can see, it's long enough that pretty much all the weight of the cap is past the fulcrum of your hand and therefore you know you feel that tug of gravity at the back so you know probably a more comfortable pen to write unposted and back to the design you have that grip there is a very slight step down from the barrel to the grip section but boy that is minimal not bothersome at all nice fine plastic threads no issue there and a fairly non-slippery plastic grip which I, is, I like. It's nice and long there, not too short, and has a nice flare out that makes that pen comfortable to hold. And because this is a number eight nib, did I mention this is a number eight nib? Because this is a number eight nib, that gets your hand far away from the paper compared to smaller grips. That's what I like about a longer, uh, larger nib. It's just the distance is to my preference away from the paper. Although I like number five nib and have bunch of pens like that that write really well this is more to my preference 
All right, now we're going to take a look at that nib. And did I mention that it is a number eight? It is. It's a number eight nib, or at least close enough to it. Technically, you measure the feed, it might be closer to a seven. But hey, that's that's good enough around here. It is a nice looking nib, similar to a, it reminds me of a Chinese knot, but I don't think that's what it is. But it's a nice logo. I like it. I like the Hong Dian, kind of curved over the nib there and fine. Very, very good. And since 1997, I like all of that. I think it does look really good. And then you turn that around and it was the first thing I noticed when I got it out of the box is that we have this ebonite feed and I'm hoping that that leads to some really good ink flow and good things like that. Whether or not that is a feature will entirely depend again on your preferences. Overall though, so far, I'm enjoying writing with this pen and I find the nib to be good out of the box. I do think I may, may tune it just a little bit. I got to break it in a little bit more before I decide. See if I can get it just a little bit smoother. This one has a little bit of audible feedback. Not bad. It's not scratchy or draggy or anything like that. I think it's just fine, but I could, I feel like it could just be just smooth, just a touch. And uh, we could finesse this into a really great writer. And it's funny when I look at this pen in isolation, it seems like a really big pen. It has kind of a nice diameter to it, and it's not a small pen at all, but it, it actually isn't that big. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. It's pretty much a standard sized fountain pen. This is the Hong Dian A9, another one of their great newer pens, one that I really enjoy. Nice material, and as you can see, not much difference in length or even in diameter at the widest points. This is just, of course, a torpedo shape, but something even more familiar would be a Twisby Eco, and uh, then you're really getting into almost exactly the same length, width, diameter, that sort of a deal. And that's repeated again when we put the Lamy Safari there. So a very standard size pen. If you're comfortable with the Safari in size, then you're comfortable with the Hong Dian A9. It looks big when you're looking at it in photos and things from sellers, but it's really pretty standard size pen. All right, caps off. And then you see a bigger difference between the length of this pen and some of the others. However, still you're in that standard zone. It and the Eco and the Lamy all really, really close in length. This does highlight a difference in nib sizes. So you have this number eight and then you have a number six. You can see quite a difference there. Those are both Hong Dians. So that's good in-house comparison. Then you get this number five that's on the Twisby, which is a Yovo steel nib. And it really, you know, you could, it's probably the material of two of these number fives involved in this number eight, which may explain why sometimes they hesitate to put large nibs on pens like that. And then you have the completely different style of the Lamy nib. You can see there's a huge difference. Now, in actual writing, the truth is the differences come more to play in the shape of the grip and the weight of the pen and all those kind of things than they do in the size of the nib. For example, the medium nib on this Twisby Eco, the smallest one here, does not have a lesser writing experience than with these other pens. It's actually a fantastic nib. What it does have is a slimmer grip, and so that will come into play sometimes when you're looking at different sized nibs. Sometimes it's more about the uh, ergonomics of the pen that are changed with a nib than it is actual writing or anything like that, and that's going to be entirely a personal preference sort of a thing. And then post it lined up end to end, you know, less difference here, right? You still have that shorter A9, but this is again just kind of right in there with an Eco or a Lamy Safari in length. Weight, of course, is going to be a lot different between this and especially that Lamy Safari. But uh, yeah, size-wise, just think of it as a normal-sized pen with a great big nib. Now, before we get into our writing test, I realized I never did take this off here and show you it does indeed come with a converter. That is the 3.4 millimeter Chinese standard, as it's sometimes called, converter. And that means, by the way, that it's also compatible with the standard Parker that you would use in, say, a Jotter or a Lamy Safari. Those will all kind of interchange the cartridges and the converters. I've done that. I've used a Lamy converter in my Jotter for a long time. I've actually switched now to a Pin BBS converter. It's also 3.4 millimeter Chinese standard, and I think that's probably because of those historical connections 
to park her there. This does have just a bit of springiness. Allows you to get a little bit of line width variation. So here is no pressure, less than less than no pressure. I, I think the paper rose to meet the nib more than I pressed down. This would be fairly normal. This would be, I'd say, a moderate pressure. And then this is trying to coax some width out of it. And so as you can see there, you can get some springiness out of this nib, just as you can with some of Hong Dian's number six nibs, the newer number six nibs, like in the, uh, is it the N11, I believe it is? That faceted pen I really like. Ink today is, whoops, Waterman. And this is Mysterious Blue. I hadn't written with this for a while. I just thought, you know, I'm going to get that back out. I lift my pen in the middle of words more when I'm having to talk. I don't know if you notice that or not, but it's true. I'm also starving, which seems to really affect my handwriting sometimes. can't write when I'm hangry, you know. It's tough stuff. As I mentioned while looking at the nib, it has just a little bit, this one does, of a uh, little bit of audible feedback, slight pencil feeling. But I like it. You know, I was talking about smoothing that out. I don't know. I go back and forth. I don't like to do anything before I do a review. I always like to do it, uh, if I can, untuned and just as it comes out of the box and that's the way this pen is at the moment I don't know I kind of like that well enough I'm I may leave it And those represent what was the highlight of my summer. My wife and I are celebrating our 30th anniversary this year. And so we wanted to go on a really special trip together. And we went on an Alaskan cruise. And it was awesome, especially since it was in June when Texas is so very hot. It was so nice. Really wonderful. Let's do our speed test here. I think I had a lift and lift. Do this again because I felt my lifts. Yeah, minus me. I think it does okay. I think you can probably hear that there is some of that feedback, but I think that feed is keeping up just fine. All right, let's do our pros and cons and give you my final impressions first. I think this is a good looking pen, you know, minus that line that I don't like. You know, that's just me, and it might be you as well. But overall, I think the pen looks really good, especially from that front angle. Uh, feels good. Ergonomics, I think, for me anyway, are quite nice. The grip is a good shape and length and all that good stuff. Weight is not crazy. It's a reasonably light pen for its size, though it does have a, though it does have just a, a bit of heft to it. Um, comes with a converter. That's always good. That number eight nib writes well. As I mentioned, it does have some, some feedback, especially depending on the paper. One paper, for example, is what really caught my mind in, you know, this, this has pencil feedback, which I generally like, but this might have a little more than I would prefer. And so I started thinking about maybe tuning that nib. But with some papers, I like that nib and its feedback. So uh, that's going to be personal preference, and it may only be my pen. It does perform well. It keeps up well. Uh, it writes a nice line on the page. It has that springiness that I like. Cons. There is that line that I really don't like down the side, but uh, I'm going to get over that, I promise. And I don't really think there are any other cons that come to my head 
immediately. Everything else about the pen, uh, very happy with. I like the look. I like that metal trim. I think it is a better looking alternative. If you kind of like this sort of metal finish that they have here with all that play of light and color, then uh, I think this is a better alternative than their previous pen. And so that would be a plus for me. I think probably the cartridge converter appeals to more people, although I, I really do like piston filler pens. And I think the price is good. It's $25. That puts it right square in a pretty competitive segment. I mean, there's all kinds of pens that you can get for that and all kinds of great pens you can get for less than that and more than that, that this pen would compete very nicely with. For example, it might go up against, well, a Lamy Ion. Uh, it doesn't have some of the quirks of the Ion that some people are put off by. I think it caps and posts better than that pen. Uh, overall, I like the look of the Ion better. But anyway, this is a much less expensive pen than that. Uh, so very competitively priced and good quality and some things to really like about it. And I don't know where else you're going to get a number eight nib with an ebonite feed for 25 bucks, except for the other Hongbian model that does those things. So I would encourage you, take a look at that. If you have already, and then you already know what you think about this pen, pro or con, please share that in the comments below. As always, like, share, subscribe. Thank you for your support of the channel. And God bless you. Have a great week.